So it is now 3.30 p.m. I call this meeting of the Youth Council to order. I'm going to do attendance and see if everyone is here. So to say, say here, um, Alyssa? Here. Lauren? Here. Megan? Here. Nick? Nick is in here. Summer? Here. Uma? Here. Yana? Here. I am here. Anthony is not here. Manuel is not here. I'm sorry. I'm here. Maggie? Oh, Anthony here. is here. Anthony. Awesome. I'm sorry, my bad. Anthony. Thank you. They're all good. I thought you weren't coming. Okay, um, Jenna? Here. Jenna. Awesome. William? Here. Amelia? Here. Ali? Here. And Thomas? Here. Awesome. Thank you guys for all being here. Um, and Nick just joined us. Awesome. So Nick is here too. Okay, so is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? I don't see anyone. Perfect. Next on the agenda is the minutes. Anthony, do you want to go through the minutes from the last meeting? Yeah, so uh, let me just take a look here. So uh, essentially, um, last meeting was sort of kind of like a post meeting from our decision on uh, the mascot issue. So we brainstormed some ideas about what we would like to do. Uh, such as kind of promoting some of the precautions um, that should be taken uh, during uh, Halloween and the Halloween season. Um, and also just talking about um, promoting uh, a positive mental health mindset, especially now as we're entering the winter. Uh, and we also um, had some updates from subcommittees, uh, a presentation from uh, Maggie uh, about the BB library and what they've been doing recently. Uh, and I think that's, that was all for last meeting. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. And do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? I motion. Thank you, Maggie. Do I hear a second? I second. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. All those in favor of accepting the motion, say aye. 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 All aye. Say, nay. say nay. Perfect. The pass unanimously. Next on the agenda, we have a presentation from our Wake Public School Adjustment Counselors, one from the Galvin and one from the high school. Thank you guys for both being here and you guys have the floor. Excellent, I can ch check in first. Uh, I just wanna say hi to everybody. Uh, thanks so much for asking me uh, to, to jump on today. I'm psyched, I see a lot of familiar faces and names from back in the day. Um, <laughs> I was actually really happy to learn about this group. I didn't know uh, much about it. I had heard a little bit about it in the past. Um, but obviously, as you know, it's certainly a, a very difficult start to the school year with everything that's going on uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, one really good thing that we started up this year at the Galvin, Mr. Colin Tony, uh, you know, put into place this year is it's actually it's actually funny. It started as kind of more of a uh, a need-based thing to help spread out students in the building. Because we needed to spread kids out, we needed more staff to be in front of kids. And Mr. Colin Tony checked in with the student support team. And we've been, the student support staff, all the school counselors and the school psychologists, and actually the administration as well, are teaching an eye care class, which we kind of just came up with, which is basically a social emotional learning class um, to kind of support students, uh, you know, specifically around this start to the year um, and student mental health and well-being. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we're kind of all running it a little bit different. The administration is focusing on eye care values um, and kind of doing a presentation model around that. Uh, it's a six week long class. We're rotating through um, everyone in the school. Um, unfortunately, because of the schedule, the way it went down, we can't get to the eighth graders. We're doing five through seven right now. And we're trying to brainstorm about a way to help support the eighth graders in a different way. Um, but the way I've been running it is we use a second step curriculum, which is a, an evidence based curriculum around social emotional learning for school age kids. And we're using it in grades. Um, so I guess K through seven right now uh, in Wakefield, which is great. Um, but kids are hanging in there. Um, but it's certainly a struggle, as I'm sure all of all of you know, as well, um, especially managing, um, you know, your time as well as your mood and motivation uh, 
uh, especially on the remote learning days, which can be very challenging. So, you know, our, our counselors have had to pivot a lot. I'm trying to figure out how I can be most helpful uh, because my, you know, my bread and butter, my go-to typically is relationships face-to-face -face with students um, and establishing a trusted relationship with kids. And that's really difficult this year, um, you know, so far. So it's happening, but it's happening a lot slower. Um, and we're, we've had to kind of pivot more to help support families on uh, hybrid learning days uh, to help support their kids. But that's about Galvin in a nutshell right now. Um, over to you, um, Ms. Burns. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Suzanne Burns, and it's so nice to be here with all of you. And it's so nice to see students' faces without masks. I really, it's amazing when you actually can see the whole face, what a difference it makes. Um, so some of you may know me, and for those of you who don't, it's really nice to meet you for the first time. I was a guidance counselor at the high school for many years, and last year was my first year in the position that I'm in now, and I, I really love it. It's wonderful, and I'm still part of the guidance department, and I work closely with them and with our school psychologists. My office is upstairs on the third floor, on the history floor. And I'm down by Miss Lopez's room. So it's the last room on the left if you're walking. I think the arrows go that way. Um, so it's down there, it's tucked away. It's like a little nook, um, which is really nice because it's very private as opposed to the guidance offices where the um, walls are paper thin. So upstairs, it's very quiet, very hot as you all know, but it's quiet. So I'll take that over the, uh, I'll take, I'll take the quiet, I'll bear with the heat if I know at least I have some confidentiality. Um, so what I wanted to share a little bit with all of you today um, is some groups that we're running this year. Um, the school psychologist, doc, uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Branco and Ms. Gordon and I have been meeting and we're, we put together a few groups. They are running, Ms. Gordon is running an anxiety um, coping with anxiety group. Mr. Bronco is writing, running a stress management group. And I am running a college readiness group for seniors and a, a healthy habits to thrive group for all students and also a substance use group for all students. And I'm really excited about all three of them. We created a Google Classroom and signups are, 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 are slow but steady. So please, if you have any interest or if you know of students that you think would benefit from being part of a group experience, please let them know. We are going to be running the groups throughout the year, which I think is wonderful. So each group will run for approximately six to eight weeks, three times a year. And the groups that I'm running, I'm hoping that if students really like the group and they want to stay in the group, they could and serve as more of a, as a peer leader or a mentor. And um, we're also open to other groups. So you, you know, you, you are our, um, a great resource to us. So if you're aware of needs in the school community, the student population, you can let me know and we can always create groups based on student need. Even if it's a group that meets once or twice or a check-in or just something that we're, we're open to responding to whatever the need um, is. And I also want to talk, talk to you about our diversion program. And, and Mr. Cedrone, you can jump into if you'd like. So some of you may know that we have a program, others of you may not, but the program started in Wakefield. I think this is the third year, am I correct? I think it's the third year, yep. So it's the third year and the program is um, a collaboration of our police department and the district. And it's a response to when students are involved in an incident that involves a substance use. It's a supportive approach versus more of a punitive like consequences. So if the student is involved in an incident in school or in the community, they're given the option of participating in a class with Mr. Cedrone. Um, and it's a two hour class, I believe. And they, um, they participate in a class where they receive some education regarding substance use. They, the student meets with me, they write a reflective essay, 
we meet again, we talk about resources, we make referrals if appropriate. And there's also a parent component as well, so the family can get some support. And it's just a, a very different approach to suspending somebody and not having any meaningful conversation around the underlying issues. And um, so I, I think, so last year it was cut short, so because we were only in school for um, a few months. So um, hopefully um, students who are involved with, or the other part that I do wanna mention, what this kind of happened organically, I think last year I did have some students who just knew that I was involved in somehow, and even though they didn't have any incidents, they sought me out anyway, which was just what we want to happen. So it's not just for students who have an incident. We want people to feel comfortable coming to us if they have, um, have any concerns about their use and they want to talk to somebody about possible strategies or ways to reduce or to eliminate whatever they're doing. So that's it for me. And, and I'm, I'm, um, I would love to talk about, if anyone has any questions or anything, please feel free to um, raise your hand or just or speak up. I can piggyback on diversion a little bit as well. So like Ms. Burns said, I run the uh, educational portion of the diversion, diversion program. So um, like she said, there's a two hour class component um, that I run. And uh, we do have a curriculum that we follow uh, that we walk through a little bit, but we also run it uh, much more like a group discussion. And um, I have found it uh, to be, I mean, personally, I, I love it. I love running it, it's very enjoyable to me. But uh, the way that I run it is uh, much more of a, a kind of realistic conversation. You know, I, I pretty quickly try to break down with the kids that this is not a punitive, I'm the adult, I'm telling you, just say no to drugs type of deal. This is not, you know, what it is. It's, if you're gonna sit here and tell me that, you know, you smoke weed and you don't want to change, then okay, that's that's fine. Like I'm I'm, I'm not your parent. I'm not you know not in charge. I, we can talk about that. We can talk about why you know think you're turning to that as a coping strategy, things like that. But we really want to kind of break down the walls a bit and have a good conversation about what the underlying reasons are for the substance use for the kids, and coping strategies and most of the time I find the kids have a, a really good conversation, a deep, meaningful conversation. They're honest with me. And um, like I said, I've had a blast running it. So, um, mm. so far it's been, it's been, it's been really great. Um, the, uh, one other resource I want to let you guys know about is also uh, www.wakefieldstudentsupport.com. Not sure how many kids know about it or not, but it's a district website for all of the student support services team. So it's kind of K through 12 counselors, psychologists, behavior coaches, things like that. And um, I'm constantly kind of updating it. And I actually most recently put a tab in there for remote learning. And uh, I'm actually meeting with the Galvin team next week to start bulking up that area to kind of give families some tips and techniques um, and strategies to organize the remote learning days, uh, whether it's an actual like a template for a blank schedule or a checklist of how to you know, go through your Google classrooms for kind of younger kids. Um, uh, but also going to put in some mental health strategies and some resources and tools because uh, I think families are struggling, uh, you know, to kind of manage that aspect right now. But I'll put that uh, link in the in the chat for you guys. Awesome. Thank you both. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Burns or Mr. Drone? Just like raise your hand or just start talking, whatever. Um, especially about like our initiatives we're doing. Any questions or ideas? So I have a question um, that I know, I know when you all brought up this issue last week where you you were concerned about some of your peers and their mental health. And I know we're gonna hear from the NAN project shortly. Um, it, if somebody's a high school student or a um, middle school student, can they go right to student support services or could they call or email? What's to, to um, get some one-on-one -on -one guidance on mm -hmm. what to do? Yeah, so at the high school, students can, this they can access support in, in several different ways. Um, you can go, a student can go through their guidance counselor um, and, um, and say they would like to meet with a school psychologist or the school adjustment counselor. Um, a parent can call and make a request. 
um, and a student can, can just speak to me directly, send me an email, stop by my office. So really whatever is most comfortable for you. And also a teacher. A lot of you have your trusted adult as a teacher. And um, we get a lot of great referrals from teachers because teachers really see you. I mean, they're the ones that are looking out across the desk, the floor, you know, across the room and they see your faces. And sometimes they, they just pick up on the vibe and they, you know, they, they may just have a sense that something is off or you may need a little support. So a lot of students will go right to their teachers, which I think is terrific. So I would say whatever is um, most comfortable, we try to keep it simple and easy and efficient. So try not to put a lot of obstacles in the way of, of, of um, access. So I always say my doors, my door literally is open now <laughs> because of COVID. So my door is open. And if someone does come to my office and I'm with somebody, and then, um, you know, you can just send me a quick email afterwards or something and I'll get back to you within, you know, I, very quick, very quickly. Um, or if you saw me in the hall, you could always check in with me there as well. Yeah, I agree with what Ms. Burns said. You know, I think the important thing to remember is it's not necessarily who you reach out to. It's just as long as you reach out to someone in the school system. Um, you know, I have had students at Galvin reach out to the music teacher, you know, Mr. Morell, or Miss Stevenson, the PE teacher, or their English teacher, or things like that, and you know, a lot of of, of check-ins and support, uh, you know, Gen Ed teachers can manage, um, and they're used to talking about. However, you know, if and when anything ever gets, um, you know, significant enough or concerning enough, they always, you know, contact student support to jump in and uh, you know, consult or get involved. So um, if anyone is ever in, you know, I don't know, intimidated or, or nervous or not wanting to go directly to a student support service member like a counselor or, or a school psychologist or things like that, you can always go to a gen ed teacher or you know, specialist teacher, anybody um, and, and reach out. So again, go to whoever your most trusted adult in the building is mm -hmm. um, and start there. It's always the, the easiest, best place to start. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to add that I, I like to say that there really is no problem too small or too big. And to come speak to somebody, it doesn't have to be a huge crisis. It could just be um, a question or just a concern or just the need to process something and have somebody else be a witness to whatever you're experiencing. So um, it really can be any issue. You can always bring a friend. Um, even bring a friend on Zoom. You know, we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, so it doesn't have to be, if you're more comfortable having somebody with you, that's absolutely fine. And at the high school, the model is, is that I can check in with students three times prior to getting a consent form signed by a parent or a guardian. So sometimes I just have students come in maybe once a month or something, just a quick check-in. So it's nothing formal, it's just very informal, very kind of natural check-in. Um, a lot of the times it's during homeroom period, which I actually would like to bring this up too, because this year looks so different. Um, so typically I would meet with students during ASC before school and after school. But this year we really can't meet with kids during classes because it's your one chance to be with your teacher. So it doesn't really make any sense to pull kids out of their, um, their academics. So I'm using the advisory period, which is 20 minutes, which is pretty good, um, using that period. Um, and after school, after 12 o'clock, we still have a couple of hours. So I'm available then. And then also on Zoom on um, all days for the hours that people aren't in school. Um, but, but back to the consent piece. Um, so again, maybe it's just a, a, um, a short term issue or a challenge that resolves itself naturally and doesn't really require, um, you know, meeting on a weekly basis. Maybe it's like, again, like once a month, just kind of checking in. Um, but if it is something bigger, then we would have a uh, parent uh, sign a form just so the parents are aware what we're working on. Um, confidentiality, of course, would be in place, but just to let the parent know that you're, the student's getting support in school. So did someone raise their hand? Yeah, Laura her. has a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, hi. hi. Um, so I was just wondering what, so we kind of talked about how our one of our next steps as a group 
um, is working on um, providing resources and kind of trying to break the stigma as much as we can around mental health, especially right now where, you know, it's getting darker earlier and cases are going up. So I was just wondering what we can do, not only as a group, but as friends to people or um, as peers, what we can do to kind of help each other through this tough time. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that question. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that this is not the year to be hard on ourselves. This is not the year to have expectations that are pushing it. I really think it's a time to practice self-care, self-compassion, self-kindness to ourselves first. So then we are able to provide it to our peers and to our families. It's just, it's just so important to really take the time every day to figure out like what, what do you need for you to be able to show up every day and function the way you wanna function. Um, and it will be different for each of us. So some of you may be going to bed at eight o'clock at night, that's me. <laughs> well, not that early, but you know, having, having some self-awareness of what you need. So maybe it's setting boundaries and saying like, I can't, I can't stay up after this certain time of the day. I need to get up at a certain time. I need to limit certain TV shows. I need to change what I'm eating. I need to drink more water. I need to go for a walk, or, you know, spend time with my dog, you know, whatever it is for you, this is a good time in your life to figure out like, what is it that fills you up, that lights you up and that makes you able to function the way you want to function. And this is a gift you will give yourself to high, in high school, you'll have it the rest of your life. <laughs> And knowing what it is for you will be key. So I think, Lauren, I think that would be a good place to start. And, um, and just trying to stay like really positive, like this will end. This will not be forever. You know, we're in it and we don't know when it will end. But right now, like it, will, it, it, will, it will not be this way forever. But right now, it is challenging for sure. I can't imagine what it's like for you students. You know, when I walk around the halls and it's so quiet, I just sometimes I just think, can't imagine what it would be, what it would feel like to be a student um, during this time. Absolutely. I hope that helps. You guys are going to be like in your 20s and you'll look back. Remember that year <laughs> that COVID hit and we literally like didn't leave the house for a year and, you know, everything yeah. was canceled. I mean, it's going to it's it's going to be really strange looking back, obviously. I um, think so, and- too. And like Ms. Burns said, it obviously, you know, so a couple of things. One is trying to trying to remind yourself of the big picture instead of getting caught up in your everyday like struggles, mm-hmm. which obviously is very challenging, is very hard to do. But take a step back and look at the big picture and remind yourself that this is going to end and it, we will get through it. It is challenging right now. It may suck right now. It's very difficult. You've got, you know, a lot of different things going on. It's hard. But you've got to kind of, I always find it helpful to breaking it down into smaller attainable pieces and smaller attainable goals. Like, you know, there's the old kind of like, you know, it's very stereotypical to say one day at a time, but it really is true. It's true for a reason because you're breaking down smaller attainable pieces as opposed to getting overwhelmed. Um, So it's, it's kind of the way you look at it. It's your perspective. Um, The other thing is kind of avoid isolating yourself. So staying connected at this time to me is a really important piece. So not letting um, friends or friends of friends or acquaintances um, isolate themselves. So finding ways to stay connected, even if you're not physically connected, uh, is really important. And then lastly, the other thing I think is, is really important is kind of establishing healthy routines. And mainly around, you know, other areas of health, you know, obviously mental health as well, but also things like diet, exercise, sleep, all those types of things. You know, I'm seeing a lot at Galvin, I'm sure you guys see it all as well at the high school, you know, kids staying up till two, three in the morning. Um, and, you know, every night over the last three to six months, you know, throughout the pandemic and things and not being in a set routine or a set schedule. And that can really throw people off. Um, it throws your diet off. It throws your sleep schedule off. Exercise is affected because sports, you know, aren't around and you're not out as much. Um, and that all has a significant effect on your mood and your coping strategies. I see it in my, myself. I see it in my own kids. Um, I just threw my kids outside for a while to get in the snow because they haven't had any exercise all day and they're like, you know, crawling up the walls. Um, So those are the types of things 
that you need to kind of have the self-reflection skills to look at yourself and see what you need and when you need it, um, but then establish some healthy relation, uh, healthy habits around mainly sleep, diet, exercise, because it all really does affect your mood uh, and your presentation and your performance. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Does anyone any, have any other questions? I don't see other, any other hands. Thank you both for coming. That was super helpful. And I think everyone here appreciates it. So thank you both. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Okay. Thank, awesome. you. thank you. Yes. So next on the agenda, we have a presentation from the NAM project we have from Lizzie. Um, so you now have the floor. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Lizzie McClellan. I'm a senior peer coordinator working with the NAM project. I am joined today by two of my colleagues, uh, Shilpa and Donna. Do you want to introduce yourselves? I'm making you take off your, your mute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shilpa. I'm a peer coordinator for the NAN project. Um, thanks so much for having us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Donna Kosick. I'm the clinical director for the NAN project and I want to thank you for having us, but I also want to applaud your initiative in wanting to learn more about how we can support each other during this difficult time. Uh, this is exactly what the NAN project offers. So uh, we're thrilled to be here and Lizzie's going to tell you a little bit about what we can do. Yeah. Um, so has anyone heard of it? I know we kind of ping all over Wakefield these days. Has anyone heard of the NAN project before? No, perfect. I'll give you. I'll give you the pitch. So, um, I think the conversation that you guys are all having around mental health and how do I help a friend who's struggling? How do I, you know, deal with my own mental health? How do I make sure that I'm healthy? Um, that is exactly the kind of conversation that we try to start and we try to continue in all the schools that we work in. So the NAM project is about mental health promotion and suicide prevention. Um, and we're in about 60, we've been in about 60 schools in Massachusetts. Um, so we're not just in, in Wakefield, we kind of go all over the state and talk to high school students, middle school students, and uh, a few colleges about mental health, suicide prevention, and pretty much all the things that, that you guys have been talking about. Um, the way that we do that is pretty unique. Um, we have a team full of other young people who have experienced some sort of mental health challenge themselves. So they get up and talk to a lot of the times it's a, it's a health class and they say, this is my story of how I dealt with, you know, when I was 17 and I had an anxiety disorder and I was having panic attacks all the time, or, you know, this is how I dealt with the depression that hit my junior year or an eating disorder. And here's how how I got through that. Here's how I figured out, you know, how to manage my mental health as a high schooler. Um, and they share those stories. And then we start talking about all of the, some of the questions that, um, that you guys brought up. How do I help a friend who's dealing with some of the stuff I just heard in your story? Or what should I do if, if that's me? Some of the things that I just heard from you. So again, so excited to hear you guys asking those questions and, and starting these conversations and thinking about how to bring um, bring that even more to your peers. And I think one thing that, um, you know, we, we say this all the time, but I think it's especially true for, for you folks based on just, you know, the, the past half hour is that as, uh, as peers, as young people, as, you know, the, the friends and the classmates and teammates, you guys are the front line. Um, as much as, and we, we know this because we've been able to work with some of your uh, teachers, we actually this week got to present to some of your parents. We know that there are a ton of adults in Wakefield who care about you guys, want to connect you to mental health support, um, and are going to do, you know, whatever they can to help you through mental health challenges. And at the same time, you're probably going to notice what's going on with a friend before, you know, maybe somebody else does. You're so connected and you know your friends so well. So as you're thinking about, you know, projects that you want to do, mental health initiatives, you know, the breaking the stigma, I love to hear that. Um, I think you guys are the, are the culture of your school. And as, as leaders in your school, I think you're already doing a lot by, by starting the, these conversations. Um, and you have a ton of uh, kind of power and momentum to do all of that. So it's really exciting to hear you talk about uh, all of that. And that's kind of why we do what we do too, is talk to young people, get them started talking about this stuff and um, you know, get everybody comfortable having the conversations that you guys want to have. So we are also open books. We'd love to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, yeah, and we'd love to kind of, if there's anything that, any projects that you guys decide to work on um, that you want, you know, some, some of us to come take a look at or, or guide you a little bit, um, we'd love to do that. 
Yes, I mean, I, does anyone have any questions for them? You can start, start talking. Oh, Donna, you have something to say. Just to add to something that Lizzie said, uh, it may be interesting for you as a group to see a presentation that we offer where a peer mentor gives their story, talks about their struggle, and you have the opportunity as a participant to ask them questions. And then you would be able to maybe model that in some way, and we would help you in any way that you can. But it might be uh, fruitful for your group to hear exactly what Lizzie was talking about. And we'd be happy to do that. Another option that's on the table, if you guys would like to bring us back, we offer a suicide prevention training specifically called QPR that walks through some of the risk factors and warning signs. And if you are concerned about a, a peer who is really struggling, how to start that, you know, uh, a very different conversation than the one we're having here, but another important conversation. So that's something else that we could do if you were interested. Definitely. Um, we will definitely talk about that. So I don't think I have any questions for them. Anything you want to discuss? I just want to say that I, I think they will be um, as you think as the youth council thinks about who's going to take on this this initiative because I do think a couple people will kind of identify who wants to take it on. They will be a great resource as far as coming up with the strategy. And then the other thing is I was thinking while um, Mrs. Burns was talking about some of the support groups and needing some outreach help. Um, the communications and outreach committee, I know, um, especially at the high school, Anthony and um, and this, sorry, Alyssa can uh, talk about that. Yes, definitely. Okay, so any other questions for the NAM project? I don't see any. Awesome, thank you guys for coming, really appreciate it. And we will definitely reach out um, when we start our initiative. Thanks for having thank us. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Bye. So next, bye. bye. Um, okay. So next on the agenda, we're talking about the mascot. Okay. So this Tuesday, Lauren, Jenna, and I presented to the school committee like our really large presentation on like how um, like how we well, went through our mascot decision. So if Lauren and Jenna want to discuss what we did, that'd be great. I have to go to the bathroom real quick, but you guys discuss. Um, so we, so yeah, the three of us went to the school committee meeting, um, Mr. Lyons introduced us, um, and then we started our presentation. So Jenna started off, um, kind of introducing, um, her and I as the liaisons. Um, we did go to a meeting previously, but we kind of wanted to, um, since we were going anyways about the logo issue, we wanted to, um, kind of give a more in-depth look about our group. Um, she did a really awesome job with that. And then Jack and I, um, again, went uh, very in-depth about our process and our research um, about the logo issue and kind of what we did um, with that. And we presented the recommendation for them to change just logo and not the term warrior. Um, so yeah, Jenna, you can add on to that if you'd like to. Um, yeah, just a few more things. One part of what I presented about the youth council and about our positions as liaisons was a piece from the original proposal, which I think a lot of people liked seeing and were asked by. And then after we gave our presentation, multiple people asked questions and commended us for the work that we had done. Yeah, so um, that's about it. I'm trying to think um, what kind of questions they asked. A lot of the questions were um, around how we came to this decision, um, our research that we did, and also the outreach process that we went through to our peers and the uh, just the general population of Wakefield with the surveys um, and the Instagram poll that we did and the results from that. Um, so we did share those results, um, the Instagram poll results and the Google slideshow that um, I made uh, with the Google form results. Um, I shared that with Mrs. Purcell after the meeting 
um, she said that she's going to pass along with the other members of the school committee. Um, but they did, they're very grateful for all of our work. And I just really, you know, it was um, Jack, Jen and I who presented it, but I just want to recognize and applaud all of you for taking the, taking this so seriously as it is a really sensitive topic. Um, and I'm very proud of the work that we all put into it and, you know, we'll see what happens. And um, I will share with all of you our big slideshow, then our more like combined slideshow, so we, you can all see it and like see what we did. But do you have any other questions about the mascot? Um, and we will definitely update you on anything you hear from the school committee. It seemed like we had a good amount of support, but there we have a press release that's going to go out in the paper soon, and we also we're also going to post it on our Instagram once it comes out in the paper. So that'll be all be there for you guys to read, which is very exciting. So. I don't know if you guys have. Oh, um, I just wanted to add that they said they're um, the topics they're discussing right now are kind of full just because the school year is still kind of getting off to a start. But they said that th this is a topic they want to discuss in the future and they'd like to have us back one time. I was just going to add um, I don't know how much you guys have research in kind of local communities, but I live in Winchester and Winchester just, um, you know, removed their uh, mascot and logo and name of Winchester Sachems. They just, uh, you know, voted and, uh, you know, kind of stopped the use of that as of, I think, September. It was really pretty, pretty quick in the school year. It had been, I've lived in, in Winchester for probably eight or, eight or nine years now. And um, I'm actually probably closer to 10 or 12, but um, it's always been rumbling in the background of every year, groups of kids kind of get going and trying to remove the Sachem logo and, and, and mascot. And um, it finally got accomplished this year. So it was kind of a big, big thing in town. I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't pretty. It was pretty ugly uh, to be honest, back and forth with a lot of uh, residents wanting to keep it and a lot of residents wanting to get rid of it. Um, but I was, I was really psyched that, um, you know, it kind of, grassroots effort over a bunch of years finally came through and had it um, removed. Um, so if anyone's ever interested, I can certainly put you guys in, into contact with someone from Winchester. Um, I'm connected with a bunch of people there uh, who were involved in getting it removed or also on the school committee or things like that. Um, if anyone was ever interested in, in consulting and talking about, you know, kind of how it went down in Winchester, maybe some tips or, or things like that um, moving forward. I also worked at Brookline High School uh, before I came to Galvin and Brookline was the Warriors as well. And they had uh, an, a, a Native American you know, logo and they switched it to, I believe like a, a military type of Spartan style helmet, but kept the Warriors. And then I actually think they ended up getting rid of warriors even years later. So they did like a, a, a they did like a two phased, first they get rid of the logo, but kept warriors. And then they got rid of, got rid of both eventually. Um, so interesting stuff. It's, it's great to hear you guys are on that. That's awesome. I, I'd like to add something too. I, I want to commend you for taking this on and to acknowledge this is a very, very big deal. Yeah. I think yeah I think that's like we kind of heard like at the school committee meeting was like people were like this is like really big because like people always I feel like also been rumbling in the background and we feel it a lot but now like we're kind of like facing head on and it's like I'm very excited but also kind of scared hopefully we don't get too much pushback but yeah so um anyone have anything to say on this issue Catherine and Jack I know um I you saw a couple of the emails that came through from adults in the community that were commending the youth council on their presentation. I also got a few texts from friends that were watching school committee that were really impressed. And um, school committee members reached out to me with the, how impressed and how well prepared you were. They said the, organiza the organization and thought that went into your um, decision, they were very um, impressed with. And finally, uh, Superintendent Lyons also said um, how impressed he was with it. So um, kudos to all of you. Yes. Yeah, so I will, we'll, we will keep you updated on this. And um, I assume that once the school year starts to get going and with the issues, like ish hybrid issues, like stop coming up with like the on this topic. So that will hopefully be in the upcoming months. So anything else to discuss on this? 
I don't see any hands. Okay. Next thing we have some updates about coronavirus and Wayfield from Catherine about the new COVID dashboard. So. Hi, well, I, I had the pleasure of showing a couple of you while you were getting sworn in my office and at town hall and it's actually in the health department. So I'm uh, privy to a lot of information about how the town is communicating about um, the COVID data and the schools are communicating about that. So I just wanted to share that with you in case you hear people questioning or wondering about data. Um, the town has put together a new um, COVID dashboard, which is located on the town's website. So I'm going to share that right now. If I can, oh, right here. Um, so you guys can, oops, sorry, that just switched to my email. I don't know why that did that. Hold on. All right. Just a moment. Can you guys see that, the COVID dashboard? Okay, so um, you can see our total COVID case count. This is right on the town's website um, and you can see it week by week. Um, and then the current resident data, you can, if you scroll down and then the Wakefield Public School data. So it's right there, it's updated once a week. So in case you're, um, people are wondering about um, the local COVID data and Wakefield is in the third week in the red, which means starting on Monday, um, some of the restaurants and some other regulations with having a town three weeks in the red are, they're gonna have to cut down the number of uh, percentage of indoor dining, things like that. So there are gonna be some um, changes because of the increased um, positivity. But um, Superintendent Lyons also does a call every um, Thursday at 4 p.m. Actually, I saw some of your parents on there. So you are welcome to join that as well if you want to understand what's going on and communicate to your peers um, what's going on with um, the schools and COVID positivity um, and everything. But I just wanted to share with all of you these resources um, and, uh, and let me know if you have any further questions. Awesome, thank you, Catherine. Does anyone, does anyone have any questions about this? Awesome, no discussion, we will move on. Um, okay, so any liaison updates from anyone? Did anyone go attend any meetings? Uh, hear back from the person? Not one? Oh, it'll be Maggie. Um, so I just got an email recently from Jackie and she sent me the, <clears throat> sorry. Um, she sent me the, uh, what's the word, brochure for the, um, the funding thing we're getting over this summer, and I can email it to you, or I can add it to the slideshow, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Nick? I was just going to say that yesterday, Megan and I had an interview with Matt Malone, the new SRO at the high school this year. Very exciting. Um, maybe you guys, for the next meeting, you have to do a little presentation on what you heard from him and stuff. Okay, we can do that. Awesome. Thank or, you. Or would you, maybe we could do a meet the SROs and have um, Officer Malone and Officer Tobin on. Yeah, I can invite them if you want. To what next you, meeting. What do you all think? I think that'd be a great idea. Everything, thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you think? Thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So um, once we get the date set for the next meeting, that'd be great if we can invite them and just let me know if they say yes. Okay. Any other liaison updates? Any other meetings? Maggie, do you want to give an update of, of the intersection topic and what you're doing with Kara? Uh, yes, I actually just got an email um, from, uh, uh, hold on email real quick. Actually, just got an email from Judy about it. And so, Basically, I've been talking to them about how the intersections and like which specific intersections they were. 
and then um Catherine sent me a um like a up a letter from um wait I forget who sent it to me this is like a very long chain of emails but Kara someone sent me the yeah, Kara sent me a letter that was like that just talked about like how some of the roads are like especially dangerous and some of the intersections like there's a crosswalk but no one like follows them and I just got an uh, email from Judy Crocker about the math dot safe route, safe routes to school um to from the court and she's the safe routes to school school outreach coordinator that serves Wakefield and safe routes is basically a free federally funded funded grade K through eight sustainable student active transportation program whose health public foundation includes education, engineering, evaluation, engagement, encouragement and equity. Um, and she just basically said she would love to have a conversation with me about how some of these are very dangerous intersections and what some of the problems are with the intersections. And yeah, that was about it. Thank you, Maggie. So, and I'll just follow up. So what Maggie, um, what Judy and Maggie are gonna talk about is actually getting some free audits done of some of those dangerous intersections from the state. So um, Maggie and, and Judy and Kara are gonna work on that. So if you guys know of any other intersections or crosswalks that are dangerous for young people when walking to school, either the high school or the middle school, let Maggie know. Great work, Maggie, that's awesome. We're, we're actually making imp impact, that's awesome. Amazing, anything else, any other updates? Um, let's do anything about the outreach committee, any other fun updates? Um, we're in the middle of our like meet the members series, if you wanna call it that. So that's almost done. And then we're going to start, uh, Lauren and I, we're gonna discuss um, posting more material on like mental health outreach, that kind of thing, and um, COVID guidelines and like reminding people to wear masks and things like that to try and help keep numbers down. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Um, anything else on this topic? Oh, and I just wanted to follow up with um, Ollie. Do you want to say what you were able to do with the Galvin PTO and Yes, so um, a couple of days ago, I sent out an email to the president of the PTO, the Parent Teacher Organization, um, Ms. DeCourcy, and I was able to send her a, um, a link from, Math, from the Massachusetts government on carpooling safety. So she posted that on the PTO's Facebook page and that got a, that, so we're like spreading the message about carpooling safety. That's, that's great, um, that's awesome. So more impacts around the community and I know carpooling I sometimes have, have issues with that so that's awesome thank you Ali any other discussion I actually have um had an idea um it's kind of unrelated to anything we've been talking about but um does our youth council have a logo or a little picture or anything because I was thinking it would be neat if we like asked some of our our students to like send in designs that we can maybe use you know totally we were actually talking about like a few months ago talking about that but nothing ever yeah. no one ever, nothing ever happened so <laughs> yeah so if we want that would be totally cool like is anybody like a graphic designer i'm definitely not but like <laughs> uh, okay no one okay maybe we can post it somewhere that would that, be really cool okay um we can Anthony, just talk about that at the oh sorry oh no, no we can also definitely saying. We can definitely talk about that at the next like outreach subcommittee meeting. Like we can put something up, like if like some people want to send designs in or whatever, we can definitely make that happen. Totally. Catherine, you say anything? I was just gonna say you do have a small supply budget line. So if if there's a you know, say you have a contest or something, or you want to hire a young person or Put, up, put it out for bid to design you a logo. I think 
a youth council logo would be nice if it's designed by a Wakefield youth, um, but that's something you can think about. So maybe Alyssa can bring that up in the communications team. I know Ollie had done some work on some stuff too. Yes, great idea. Okay, Anthony, yeah. Oh, this isn't exactly related to liaisons, but um, I am currently writing up the newsletter and hopefully I think by the end of this weekend, I should have the first draft ready to go. And then by the end of next week, it should be out. Hope I'm hoping and ready to be uh, read throughout the town, which I'm really excited about. Definitely. Um, do you know where we're thinking about posting it? Because I think you probably posted it like, on the Wayfield community page. But like, is there anybody, like, is like, can like the schools send out like mass emails or whatever? Like, how do you think we can get it out to students? I was hope, hoping that was the case too, that we can um, send it sort of like um, how there are those um, sort of, uh, there are those like administrative updates that the parents will receive. I hope, I was hoping like I, I could get that like to that thread as well. I think too that the, didn't the both principals agree to sending out your newsletter to the student bodies? Um, when we were on Get Up PL, when Mr. Colin Tony said if we need him to um, reach out to the students about anything, he can. So he can, either, I'm sure he can either send an email or even have, like, tell students to check the newsletter on Get Up Galvin. I had I had sent him an email about something similar, but he never responded. So I'm and I tried following up with him, but he still never responded. So I'm gonna I will try following up with him about like reaching out to him about sending out the newsletter. So I will do that in the following days. Ollie, and don't forget about Mr. Cedroni. <laughs> He's very good. He could he could be your uh, ally within the school too, because sometimes the principal is getting so many emails that it's hard to navigate. He might just be able to help you too. So it's always good to look at those other trusted adults in the school to help you. Oh yeah, throw CC me on anything. Cause yeah, it is Mr. it's tough for Mr. Cullen Tony. A lot of times it gets a little swamped with those emails. I yes, I will definitely do that. Awesome. Great guys. This is fantastic. I'm really excited about this newsletter. I am anticipating very high quality. It's gonna be great. Very exciting. Okay, so any other discussion about liaison positions? No, okay, no discussion, great. Okay, next meeting date. Let's look at my calendar. Do -do -do -do. So um, question, so for sport people, when do sports end or like, uh, what, what, what do we know? Like do sports like end soon? I believe for f at the high school fall sports end on November 21st, I think. 21st, okay. Because our next meeting date will be the 20th. So you would, so people will still practice, right? Yeah. Wait, 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 when's Thanksgiving? No, the next week, okay. So will the 20th work people 20th through 30? I know Emanuela said she can make the next meeting because last week, next week is her last meeting. So okay. she said, if it sticks on this schedule, she can make it. But I don't know, William, you, will you still have cross country at this time? I think I will. So, um, but we're usually done by around five or six. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think Lauren and Anthony, when's banned? Our final band rehearsal is the 5th of November. Oh, okay. So Great. we just have the third and the fifth, uh, and that'll be, that's the season. Yana, do you have field hockey after, once field hockey end? Um, we still have like five games left, we're like halfway through the season, but um, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I say we stick for the 20th at 3.30, and if something comes up, if like half people can't come, we can change it. I think right now, 20 to 30 makes sense for the majority of us. Okay. Okay, the only thing I know is that um, people were curious about the signs by the lake and that's planning board, which is William. So William's been, William, have you been, go? have you gone to any of those meetings yet? There is a meeting in a few days that will address the signs, I think. So I'll have an update on that. 
Right. So even if you're not able to come to the meeting, if you want to put together something that um, you can share um, with the group. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely share it. Great, because I know a lot of a lot of the um, youth council members are curious about that. There's also town meeting on you know, like two Saturdays or next next Saturday. So um, if anyone wants to go to that, I will probably go for a little bit because I think town meeting is super fun. But um, I also like the drama. It's kind of funny. So um, okay. So I say sticking for the twenty to three thirty. If I'm just email me if you can't come, and then if a lot of people say they can't come, we will um, find a new date. But it's Friday the twenty to three thirty. Great, awesome. Okay. Um, anything else? Anybody's talked about any other business that needs to be discussed? Um, Captain and Juve, anything else we need to talk about? Nope. Okay. No one. I don't see any hands. So, do I hear a motion to end the meeting? I have a motion. Awesome. Thank you, Summer. Do I hear a second? A second. Also, oh, hold on. Never mind. One more thing. Um, I'm going to send an email out to uh, to Anthony and Emanuela about because now we have an open open voting member high school seat. So, Anthony, check your email. You know, we, I think next meeting we'll probably have like everyone talk for a little bit and then we can probably vote on what we think. So that'll be next meeting. Okay, now summer motion for to end. Terry, Terry second that motion. Oh yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, Maggie, Terry, two seconds. It. Some seconds motion. Okay, awesome. I right, um, we must second it. Okay, now all in favor, any of the meetings say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Also, that motion passes. The meeting is ended. Um, everyone check your email soon. And I'll see you guys on the 20th at 3.30. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Bye. Bye.